This video is going to focus on showing a solo Grandmaster Nightfall on the Corrupted this week. For those of you who want to see the run, then skip the timestamps you have available to you. Other than that, I'm going to show you what weapons I use, the build, etc. So before I get into that, number one thing is that this is not a Platinum run. This is a run to show you how to solo Corrupted to get the Triumph. The Triumph does not require Platinum rank. This is more of a how can most people do this, not just top 1%. How can most people get this triumph done solo? That's it. So, we're on a hunter. I recommend this is the easiest way of doing this. Um, I will go into what Nightstalker class I've got. So, I'm on top tree with the trapper with Vortex Grenade. Marksman's Dodge. Pairing that with the exotic chest player, the 6 Coyote. So, we had double dodge. That's key to this. You must put that on. Um, Weapon-wise, we're using the exotic grey launcher with a hod. Tyranny of Heaven, which is a solar bow, and Trancha, which is an arc linear. Now, if you want to swap these two about and you want to use maybe an arc bow with a solar Corsair's Wrath, then do it. Uh, it's up to yourself if you've got Tyranny of Heaven or not. If you haven't, as I said, you need solar somewhere in your loadout, so you're going to have to run Corsair's Wrath then, if that's the case, if you haven't got Tyranny, uh, as I don't recommend Tikus either, because right, we really want a hard on for this strap. So anyways, that's what I had. If you have taken spec, put it on. If you don't, then I understand. Then you put um, a major spec in the tarantula, I would say. Maybe boss, major, probably major spec. And then on the um, bow, a major spec. If you haven't got taken spec, okay? Armor mods <clears throat> are as follows. On the helmet, we have Grey Launcher Armor Finder, Linear Fusion, Rifle Armor Finder, Protective Light, Blast Radius on the gauntlets with Overload Bow and Stopable Fusions. Double arc resistance with a powerful friends on the chest plate. You may as well go ahead and put that on your 6 clarity. Make sure it's arc. I have a void and a solar one. I have all three variants of this. If you haven't, I would strongly recommend, even though it costs three shards, whatever, to change it. Change it. Just change it over, honestly, if you haven't got one. Because it's so important to have the arc resistance on. If you're going to solo this, then you must have the arc on. If you're not going to solo it, it doesn't matter to you. Then on the boots we have um, the scavenger for fusion rifle, the artifact mod. Grey launcher scavenger is so important as well. A shield break charge, a resilience of tier 3 minimum. And then we have on the class, we have utility kickstart which is stasis. Particle deconstruction and then a mod to fill in the um, gap. Ensure that you have 100% mobility. Or as close to as you, I would say on this, you need 100% mobility. Without it, your run may fail. Okay? I'm just saying it out there. So you got to run the powerful friends. Uh, there's other ways of doing this. It's just how high i done this. And you'll see why I went with the trapper as opposed to the usual um, way of the Pathfinder. You know, Omnioculus or Six Coyote or Graviton Forfeit. I didn't go those setups. And I'll explain why in the run. But that was what I was using. Okay, so with this starting section, you want to immediately summon your sparrow, and you want to come over to this section here. Go over the far right side. If you don't want to sparrow it, you can just invis past ads, that's fine, whichever you want. Um, and essentially, there's only one target in this area that you need to kill. As I said initially at the start of the video, this is not a platinum run. So if you're looking for a platinum run, you'll, you're going to need to watch another video. This is for how to easily get the triumph, and it was my first clear on this um, Grandmaster for Corrupted as well. Right, so whenever you do your first clears, you always do it the easiest way. It's a long season, so I've got a lot of challenges in mind for other Grandmasters, maybe even this Grandmaster, right? Uh, there'll be some Grandmasters I'll barely touch. Uh, there'll be some I'll touch more than others. It's just how it is, right? Um, but with this one, as I said, I'm still going to cover it, right, and show you how you can, as I say, solo it. So when you take down the Phalanx, you can then just invis past those ads. You don't need to obviously kill on the overloads because you're not going for platinum, you're going for the solo completion. Um, then you can jump down here, and then what you want to do is do two invises. Now we're on top tree Night Stalker, okay? We're not on, obviously, we have the Pathfinder, which is more invisibility, okay? So essentially, with Utility Kickstart, you need a Stasis Cloak for this. If you run at least one, you can't run two because you need a Particle Deconstruction. Right, that's end of discussion with that. You can't run two utility kickstarts. But I would say you can run one. That's 15 seconds of, almost 15 seconds of invisibility. That's a long time to skip parts. 
right? It might take a little bit of um, smarts to sort of um, manipulate what we want, you know, go to certain areas where the ads can't see us. Because as I said, it's not as good as we have Pathfinder for the amount of time you're in Vs. But the more you, your invis is a true invisibility. I'll talk more about this. But this bit right here, you want to do a uh, Wither Horde, a Smoke, a Grenade, and then another Wither Horde. Right? And then just back up to um, this area here. Hopefully the sounds push you. For the most part, most of the sounds were took out, I believe. But this is where you really need to be on, on, on par. I can see there's two sounds still left alive. Uh, and then we want to sort of take down one of the phalanxes. <clears throat> the orange bar phalanxes, there's two orange bar uh, phalanxes that are shielded. There's also a centurion that's shielded, that's an ultra. So, you want to sort of focus getting a centurion down, uh, not the centurion, but the phalanx, and any scions that have got away from you with a hard shot. If you're good enough, you'll kill all the scions. My shots maybe weren't as good as they should have been, but that's fine. Right, I used my invis, I used what I had to make the best of the situation. Anytime a phalanx will push you like that, do not let them boop you. Either dodge past them or, or jump over their heads. Just don't let them boop, them, boop you in the wall. Because there's a modifier on to say that <coughs> incoming arc damage is on and knockback distance is on and things like that. That's why we've got the arc resistance on the double. Now you can see I'm picking relics up behind the pillars, right? You can do that to easily pick up the relics. You might want to watch that bit back again, because that bit right there that I've just done with the two phalanxes and the sounds is very difficult. To me, I found it super difficult because the centurion does his orb while you're fighting scions and while you're fighting phalanxes. So that bit might take a bit of practice for you, right? But anytime you're in doubt, you need to do an invis, because what will happen is... These um, orbs that the Centurion do, right, they track you. As soon as you go in Viz on top tree Night Stalker, you break tracking from all ads immediately. We have the Pathfinder doesn't do that. It's kind of half in Viz. It sometimes will lose tracking on ads, sometimes it won't. The orb will still track you and kill you. So that's why I went for this I also went for it for Shriekers and I'll talk to you about all that as well because obviously we're coming up to the Shriekers we have the Pathfinder cannot invis past Shriekers we have the trap the top tree what I'm on now can do it okay so that's another key point why I went this class it, it just ended up working out better for me to be honest I did do a of the Pathfinder run but as I said uh, I knew that there was an issue with Shriekers, so I switched over to this tree and experimented to see, well, can I actually skip those Shriekers with this class? And turns out you can. So we're just going to keep doing damage to this centur Centurion. Any time he does his orb is the time you can Wither hard. That's your moment to do a Wither hard, like right now, but he was already Wither hard, so I was fine. Or you can just prime him down. <clears throat> just be careful of the damage that he does to you. Uh, sometimes shots can get past that wall. You can see, always keep an eye on your HP all the time, constant. Always be sort of, have that in your peripheral vision. Be looking at your HP while you're fighting the enemy. Because you could get you could get half HP and not realise it without your shields break. Because there's no audio cue until your shields break. And by the time your shields break, it might be game over. Do we have a hard grenade and a smoke? to blind the ads and then a tether. This will then, if you do enough damage to enough of the scions, that will share all the damage to the other scions, being able to actually take out the full um, section, like in terms of ads. They're not going to uh, be any sounds left alive. The tether will seal the deal, it should do. If there's still sounds alive and you, you know, you've know you got this, you've got everything chasing you, that's fine. Just use a grenade and another, uh, a grenade and a wither horde shot at the floor of any silence to stop them from duplicating right and then you can invis past and then now you're safe this isn't difficult this requires map rotation now silence are dealt with we're good it's just two centurions but they don't do orbs so this is significantly easier than phase one in my eyes because there's no orb chasing you so you just need to be map rotating there's two orbs left and right Okay. Be careful of the taken balls in middle and be careful of boobs like that. I was super lucky here, but you can see protective lights saving me. 
right, which I have shield break charge on to get charge of light and blast radius. Blast radius, get a double kill with river horde, which is so easy on sounds, you get charge of light. I didn't have taken charge, I couldn't fit that into my build, but if you want to uh, pop a taken charge on instead of shield break, you could have done that. I just done a, a shield break because there's a couple of shields later on and it was kind of beneficial. So it's just preference, it's whatever you want. But as long as you got, as I said, a protected light set up on, without it, it's just more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible without protective light. It's just more difficult. You know, the scale of it goes up and up and up. So now we're just map rotating. These phalanxes, especially when there's two of them, they will flank you. They will, one will go left, one will go right. They're kind of smart that way. So you need to be on the move all the time. Always be running, okay? You can see this invi there's enough invisibility on this setup to be sufficient for this encounter. I don't need to be invis all the time, okay? It's not like that. It's like, well, I only need invis at times when, you know, a phalanx is pushing me and I want to jump over the heads or something, right? It's instances like that. Use your smoke as well. Obviously, you're not on bottom tree, so you can smoke to blind enemies. Uh, I could have went gambler's dodge, but I felt... Marksman's dodge is just better because I can instantly re reload with a hard shot. See, I need to do more than one with a hard shot. I can do with a hard shot. Uh, in Viz, I get a Marksman's dodge and I can do another one. That's more useful to me than just having loads of smoke bombs. You don't need that. You don't need smoke bombs all the time, okay? So I, I would say Marksman's dodge is better when you're using top three. It takes three orbs to take the Centurions, right, the yellow bars. Uh, with no transcendent blessings or ribbons, because I didn't use any of that stuff, okay? Um, mainly because a lot of my uh, Dream City armor couldn't, I couldn't place transcendent blessings in it. I don't know whether it's bugged, I don't know what, but I'm not too fussy, you don't need it. But it, it's an example of when Bungie done mods stupid, like having mods that are used up to then have to get more transcendent blessings. You should just own that mod, when you get it, you should own it. Same with Riven's Curse. Obviously, you only allow it to slot it into a Dream City piece or a raid um, or a Last Wish piece. That's fine, but they're not they're not um, permanent mods. It's so annoying. So you've got to farm them up. I've got four transfers and blessings, but I didn't I didn't want to waste them on this. If I'm going to do a, a better run than this, maybe on a walk or something, I maybe will invest the time to put transfers and blessings on and stuff like that. But for this setup, I didn't, and it, it, you don't really need it. Just be careful uh, of the knight. He, his two moves are, he does stasis and he does the solar move. Now I've mentioned in my previous Corrupted when it was Master, before GMs came out, knights got nerfed. Knights are nowhere near as dangerous as they used to be. The whole Corrupted solo thing isn't what it used to be, okay? The, the older version is way more difficult than this. Sadia, the Corrupted boss, has been nerfed um, twice. Number one, the shield, the shield timer, you only got 10 seconds to do DPS, then you get another wave of ads every time you do that. That was kind of too harsh, and I knew I know why they've changed that, because it would have been too harsh for GM, and it would have been. Um, but what they've also done is they've nerfed the knockback distance of the boss. Okay, Because obviously there's a mod saying uh, increased knockback distance from Syria, right? Well, that's been nerfed. The boss doesn't knock you back as much. Still knocks you off map. Still knocks you off map, but that can happen. Uh, pick up all ammo on the elevator, and then you want to do invis right there, and then invis when your first invis runs out. The shrieker will open up. The shrieker cannot track you, um, but if you show yourself just a little bit, they'll start tracking you just there. But come to this tower, this pillar thing, and just wait. Let the shrieker sh close. Eventually, ads in this game get bored. This shrieker is going to get bored with me. They're going to close up. And I can skip. I know there's Unstoppable Champion and all that stuff, but as I said, it's not a Platinum completion. And I've said that from the get-go, so I've been honest about it. So if you're disappointed about that, then I'm sorry about that, but this is my first completion on it. Then, you want to sort of sneak up behind this Unstoppable and the Knights, and then do an Invis as late as possible, but not too late. And then when that one runs out, another one. And then come to this uh, hill here, this rock area. The Shriekers may open up. I think one has opened up here. But that's fine, they can't hit us. The Unstoppable won't know where you are. As long as you've timed your invisies perfectly, right? Um, then you, you're good. Just wait for double dodge. So that's what we're doing. We're waiting for the double dodge again, right? And then we'll do another one at the steps. 
and then make it you need to make it to that pillar with the red on it make it and all the ads behind you the shrieker tele um despawns right that's just how that works when you do it this way so that's all done now we're on the uh ogre section ogre section isn't difficult it's just slow so i wouldn't recommend doing any damage <clears throat> to the unstoppable at all i did there i was kind of worried because i thought the unstoppable was going to push into this area um, but where you want to fight from is this left hand side. I don't know what it's like on the right. I always go left and I find it's pretty good at this uh, on this section. And then obviously the mechanic is cast away. So every 20 seconds, I want to say that mechanic will come at 10 seconds, but it won't come up straight away. The cast away. So take 20 seconds each room. That will keep happening until one realm is taken out. There's a the hive realm and the taken realm. You need to take out you need to take out the uh, hive realm first what i mean is the ogre okay the only vip target in this room so you can do damage to the taken one that's fine do that but don't kill the taken one first because you're gonna have a bunch of arc knights chasing you all that stuff and you don't want that because i know we have got arc on with tarantula and what have you but it's a real waste of ammo and we need all that ammo, you know, as much as we can for when we get to the boss fight because it's so important that you've got ammo to burst knights down, things like that. Don't get me wrong, use a bit of heavy here and there, but I'm not going to be using it on knights. And if I can optimize it, which I did, you take out the hive realm first. That's just the golden rule with it. Uh, you can fight from the stairs, as you can see. You can fight from left hand side, wherever you want. You can use Weaver Horde as your main sort of damage. Don't be spamming too much heavy, as I said. Uh, we're just going to primary for the Taken Ogre. Because, we, we do, as I said, we're not taking the, the Ogre, the Taken one out first. It's the Hive. We need to do that. We'll utilize a Tether. Just be careful when you do so. I use a Tether and a Grenade and a Weaver Horde, and then I back off. Obviously, it's top three, so the Tether's going to last way longer. And it's going to spread out to the, all those ads. Um, so if you can kill some of them ads, that's good because there might be ammo drops for you. Because this is the thing about ammo drops. If you kill the Hive Ogre first, you'll only have the Taken Realm left. You'll then kill the Taken Ogre. You'll go through a portal, which will then port you back to the Hive Realm. The game will remember all the ammo drops you got beforehand when fighting the Hive Ogre. That's useful because once you because this is going to spend a, you're going to have to spend a lot of ammo taking these ogres down because they're tanky. It's just how it is. But if we can sort of get some more ammo later, that's fantastic. So just note that any enemies you kill right now, don't be wasting heavy on arc knights. But any like you know acolytes things like that, you'll get all that ammo. You'll have a chance to come back for this. However, in the taken realm, you won't. So once this is done you won't be able to come back here once you go through the teleporter so be sure that you get all the ammo from here once you're done with it which i'll point that out when we are done with it we're just playing super safe this is a conservative run uh from the get-go it's not <clears throat> a fast run it isn't it's my first solo play on it so it's not gonna be it's a conservative run but it's a safe run no i got this done basically in my second main attempt my first attempt i died at the boss uh, he knocked me off map, which it was maybe more my fault when I watched it back. But on this run, I've learned everything from the first run. I learned everything that you could skip, and on the second run, I got it, which I was I was happy with. I know it was uh, I know it's not a plant and run, but it was I was happy enough with it to post it. So now we're going to get ready for this ogre. I believe he's pretty weak. Yeah, it's 10%. Try not to um, be exposed by that ogre, not even for one second. Because it's Grandmaster typically, ogres destroy you. Okay, they can destroy you really quick. Even if you've got protective light, it doesn't matter. And we're not using void resistance, because you should be using arc. Because what does arc in this? Well, it's the boss does arc, right? And you've got to fight the boss for a long time. Scions, you've got to fight scions a long time. They do arc. Um, the Centurions were doing Ark earlier. There's so much stuff that does Ark. I think this Ogre does, does Ark. I think the Taken one, it looks like he's doing Ark. So there's so much that does Ark. There's an Unstoppable there, but we forget about him, of course. Take down the VIP. Then the Castaway mechanic stops. And then you're good. 
Now it's just a case of DPS and the taken ogre. There is three shriekers in this room. We're not going to take any of them out because it's, it's just going to be a waste of time. You're going to have to spend so much ammo on them that it's not worth to get a, a possible ammo drop off them. Because by the time you spend... It takes three weaver hard shots to take a, a shrieker. It's not really worth it in my eyes. Just plus one on uh, top three night stalker so we can skip them. We've got the build to do that. You can even blind them with your smoke and all sorts. If you've got blinding grenades, um, you can you can do a blinding grenade uh, type run. I was thinking about doing that. That would be useful. Probably a blinding grenade can take a good energy bow and then a good heavy, a uh, good linear. And you could do it like that. Right, that, that would be a way, because you could blind all these shriekers and just run past them. That would be a good strat. As I said, you go through the portal, make sure you picked up all your ammo before you went through that portal, which I did. I was short on Weaver Horde, so I killed one of these frogs. But we're not going to take this room either. We're going to hope to get a brick. I do, so I go in Viz. I'm going for that brick, and I'm going to make my way back to the entrance. Because I'm not prepared yet. <clears throat> you need to be... as a, This room isn't so hard to skip, but you, you, you want to be on point with it. So we'll do one in Viz here. Jump over the unstoppable, and then you want to head right. There's not much that can snipe you. The snipers are stasis snipers. They don't do much damage. If they catch you, though, you will fall off the map while you jump if you're affected by stasis. So you got to be careful of that. But for the most part, this is pretty simple, do you can see. Not much is hitting me. Really tiny dodges because we haven't got as much invis as what we would usually have with a uh, bottom tree, but it's still enough to make it through. <clears throat> so with this drop, you need to be careful. This drop can end your run. Basically, the taken blights that swell around, right? There's a couple of those. They knock you. They can knock you off the map. It's like I think they're sort of buffed by uh, knockback distance. So what you want to do is jump to this rock. When you jump to the rock, just slide off it left side, and then just strafe. Move your character close. I would do a jump to negate drop distance just in case because what it is the teleporter if you hit it it will negate all drop distance and you will be fine if you slightly miss that porter you'll break your legs and die so just do a jump just to be uh, just to be safe you don't die you don't want to be wiping there you've, you've got this far you don't want to be wiping at that bit okay so we do an invis before we um, jump over and then a second one on the platform we're skipping these acolytes they are void shielded as well which we don't have the best setup for. I mean, we've got our grenade, but that's about it. We'll do a grenade at the stasis one to at least stagger him. I would recommend you do that, the orange bar, because he's doing stasis. Stagger the um, the major, and then just keep doing your invises. And then jump, make this jump here. The sniper to your left won't get you from here. I tested that, and he doesn't shoot you, so that's good. If he did, we would be in, we would be in a bit of trouble. That's fine. You can make your way over, and then this is the boss fight. Go in Viz before you start the fight up. By starting the fight, you hit the middle plate. There's middle plate left and right, okay? There's three plates. And then there's the outer islands, I would call it. You can stand on this outer island. It used to be no turn back zone. Now, it kind of still is a no turn back zone at certain points. I've done the research on it. I've tested all these strats in adept on my own to check what's going on. Where can you stand at what phase? What can be done? So I've done all the tests beforehand, before I'd done the, the GM, so I knew sort of what the deal is with it. So this zone, you can use this outer island when fighting the ads. When the, the, the phases work like this, you must understand the phases. If you don't, you're going to wipe. Okay, so the first phase will automatically start of ads. You've done no damage to the boss, you haven't even broke a shield. You get a phase of two or three solar knights, a good three or four um, scions, orange bars, and a bunch of sounds. Use your tether there. You saw I just used my tether. I used Weaver Horde, a grenade, put a lot of damage in, and that shares all the damage. You'll, you should kill 90% of the adds by doing this. There will be some stragglers alive. You just saw a scion nearly kill me. He me. It, not, it didn't kill me, but it, it was close to. So, when you're going over there, inspect. We're inspecting now to see that all knights are, are dead. All scions are dead. Everything. We're checking. We're, we're fine. That's why I'm playing so slow. 
might look like I'm playing slow, but I'm actually checking the area because knights can hide. You wouldn't even know about it. They could be hidden on the left plate, right plate. They jump, these knights. Now we're going to keep throwing orbs. I believe it's five orbs to break a shield with no transcendent blessings, no riven curses, none of that. So we've thrown two there, that's three. Yeah, so it's five orbs to total. So through, your, uh, so through your four orbs, then pick up an orb, right? I'm checking the shield. It's an itty bit left, that's good. And then what we're going to do is do an invis, pick up the orb. When you invis on this class, you will lose the orb. And then you want to make this jump over here, so that the boss does not do his boop mechanic on you. The boop mechanic has range drop off, okay? If you're close to the boss on middle plate, and the boss is on right or left, if you're close each to the boss, maybe 5 to 10 meters, they'll do the mechanic. If you're standing far away, there's no boot mechanic there. So you can ignore that. For these phase, this is phase 1. When we go to phase 2, like the, the main phase 2, then not so good. I missed a couple of linear shots, that's fine, but we can take DPS slow. You don't need to rush DPS, you don't need to use tons of heavy. What you do now is you get another phase. So you get a phase of adds for every shield break you do. The boss will put up three shields before this phase is finished. Before this area is finished and you go to this, the Shattered Realm area, whatever you call it. So you're only gonna ever going to get three phases of adds. Um, and obviously the next phase of the shield break will be linked to DPS. So we obviously haven't done any damage. The boss is unshielded. So you need to keep an eye on where the boss is. The boss is currently on right hand side. So you could although they do rotate from right to left, the boss. I believe he's on right hand side. Um yeah he is. But you just need to be super careful. Don't let the boss hit you. A direct hit will get you weak with the arc resistance. A splash damage shot, so say the shot hits the ground right in front of your foot, it'll do a little bit of damage, not much. Um, which is odd, because in team runs you get one shot. I don't know why in team runs you get one shot with arc resistance, but yeah, in the solo you don't. It seems iffy to, iffy to me that, but that's what I found in the solo. The boss isn't doing much damage if it's just a splash damage. If it's a direct hit, you will get hit hard, there's no doubt. So there's a knight to left, so you need to look at where the knights are going. Okay, um, This knight, I think, can start shooting at you if he pushes up so far on that plate. He can start hitting you from here. So this is, as I said, this is where you're fighting from the whole time. You can, this, is, this phase is safe. Right? It, it really is safe. You don't really need to, say, push up, be doing any of that stuff. Uh, we've got another tether. We've got another phase of adds because what we'll end up doing is we'll take the adds what we've got now. We'll do DPS to the boss because we haven't even done that yet, really. The boss will get shielded, and as I said, every time you get a shield, you get adds. Okay, the the adds are linked to the shield, so we'll use the tether for that phase. But right now, I'm just sort of checking the area out, seeing what's still alive. There's still a knight here. So whenever you're going to face a knight like that, you want to get a shield break quickly with your bow, which will one-shot. Uh, and then a weaver horde. Now that will kill that, that particular type of uh, knight, the red bars. Also, my tyranny of heaven doesn't have explosive payload. So if you have an explosive payload one, you're going to find it to be better than what I used. I used a, a rampage one. It worked out okay. Don't get me wrong on scions with the rampage times three. It was actually really working out really good for me. But an explosive payload one, I haven't got it. So I can't really make use, as I said. But this bow, funnily enough, even though it doesn't have explosive, it still worked on overloads just fine, as long as you're getting your crits. So I was quite surprised. Maybe the Archer's Temple was helping out because um, I'm keeping up with doing enough damage just at the right time to keep the, the continual overload going plus the weaver hordes doing extra starry damage so it, it ends up working out okay but i still would recommend an explosive payload bow over this one for this so now we're doing our dps well not dps it's just we're just doing chip damage we're doing that to save on ammo for the later phases of the fight because ammo is more important later on the first phase not so 
pot important. We're just we were just doing a damage gate. Now you see the boss has teleported. Stay on top of your audio cues. I can't tell you. Turn your SFX volume up to 10, 9, 8. Turn music volume off to zero, and then turn uh, dialogue audio. So likes of Zavala talk and all that stuff. Get that stuff off your comms. It's in the way. Okay. I'm not being funny about it, but it is. We've heard. You've probably heard the corrupted music. 10 million times so you don't want to listen to that while you're doing it it's just a distraction now we're doing a tether here for the third phase this is the final phase of ads on this section put as much damage as you can in really even linear shots if you want because the more damage you do all the damage is shared between each tethered target okay that's how the top tree works kind of different the bottom tree office rig would have been amazing here but <coughs> for invis purpose we need the six coyote to actually get here the way I did. Okay, so you can't have everything. There's still some knights alive. Um, I'm not sure how many. I think you get three affairs or two affairs. Interesting thing about these knights is they jump. Have you noticed on this um, in this room now? There's rocks coming between the middle platform, left and right of the middle platform. They can knock you off the map, end your run, all sorts. But what they can also do is kill knights for you. They can kill captains, knights. It's really good. So if you've done some damage to a knight and the knight jumps over to middle and he gets caught by a rock, he'll be knocked off the map and you'll get, skill po you'll get points for it. So always pay attention to your kill credit because a knight might go into cover and you're like, where is that knight? Where is the knight? But you might not have realized he's actually fell off map. So knowing that, keep an eye on your... Your, your points, you're taking sound in the middle of the screen, you're night, you're night. Because whenever you're running away from an ad or you've overhauled them, it's nice to know that you've killed them while you're busy trying to avoid the boss or whatever else you're trying to do. It just gives you that co kill, conf uh, kill confirmation to say, right, I've done that, that's good. I don't need to worry as much. That bit's done, this bit's done, and so on. There's a couple of sounds here that are duplicating, being a pain, they can be at times. We've heard your best friend to, uh, for Scions, um, but the problem is these Scions were duplicate. Now, I learned on this run how to stop that, because they're in cover, they're not pushing me, so we need to aggro them. Right, I end up aggro them, uh, you'll see me do that, because when I'm standing, they're not going to do that. But there is, a good, there is a good spot where you can do that on this island, which you'll, I will end up doing it soon, I believe. Because it's no good to you, the sounds will push, but there'll be one sound still not pushing. So if you push up to this pillar here, the boss can't really see you, you can actually take out knights. So once you start engaging with the knight, that has then made the sounds more confident to push you. They aggroed on you, which is exactly what you want. Now I do some weaver hard shots, I return to my safe position, and I can just deal with it, deal with everything now. The knight's tendency with AI is to retreat when their shield is taken down or you've done a good a bit of damage to them. Just how these taken knights work, I hate this mechanic. I don't find it interesting, it just slows you down. Uh, I wish the knights maybe they, they rework them. Make them more aggressive, that's fine. But when they're doing this thing, when they're just hiding and hiding, it's more of a patience game than it is anything. And you'll find that that's even worse in the Shattered Realm because you've got three Solar Knights to take. But there are, there are you know, ways and means of it, you know, taking them better. And you see that. But it's just, it is just a patience game. One more Knight, as you can see, he jumped over it. The rock nearly hit him, but didn't. That's unfortunate. But as I said, it can happen. Our heavy's low, so we're going to go and look at ammo. I, was, I strongly recommend you go for ammo in middle when there's no ads alive because what happens is um, all the ammo can get booped because of the mod I don't know what the mod is for the nightfall but when an enemy is killed they spawn like a take and boop wall type thing and it boops all the ammo because the ammo has physics so that's another thing that's annoying about corrupted I could go on about five minutes about all the things that are wrong about this strike about how badly it is it's a badly designed strike um, it's the environment is beautiful and the graphics are amazing, all that stuff. But to play it, there's little to nowhere to stand. They've added that outer island because they knew that 
it was such a badly designed strike. I don't think they're going to make a strike like this again. I, I don't think they're going to because I think they know it's not well liked. It's kind of like Exodus. Exodus Crash is actually very similar to this Nightfall. It's got an annoying boss. You can't stand anywhere. There's no freedom. You want a perfect balance between having freedom but good mechanics. Savathun Song is a classic one, right? Pyramidian is a classic one. There's sort of a good amount of space to stand while it's still being difficult. That's what you ultimately want. You don't want these nightfalls where they're shipping just to the point where, right, what, what is this? What are we actually even playing with this? Because as I said, it's not well liked, but it's popular to watch because people like watching Corrupted because they regard it as the hardest GM. I don't think it is now. I think Hollow Lay is harder than this. I'll tell you why. I spent two days on Hollow Lay straight learning Hollow Lay. I didn't go around watching everyone's videos. I, I learned it myself. And that to me is the hardest Grandmaster so far. That's just my personal preference. Maybe because I'm not so good at. Uh, maybe it's because I'm not so good at Hollow Lay. Maybe that's why I find it the hardest. I don't find Corrupted. I got it on, as I said, on my second main go at it. My first main go, I got to the boss and I was killed by the boom mechanic. Second go, I learned from that and it didn't let it happen again. So that was our final shield break. You'll then get um, another wave of ads. So I've actually incorrectly said there was the last wave before. This is actually the last wave because there's obviously another shield break to do. So we'll do the same again, Tether. Wait for the ants to come onto that mi middle platform, right? M wait for them to, to come into the tether. Then you can get the more utility out your tether. And as you can see, it's took out most of the ads. Uh, just a couple of knights. The knights won't group up as well as the scions. Um, but if you ever get an opportunity to linear a knight, you do it. Especially on this loadout, because I'm using solar primary arc. Um, so the bow, it will break the shield, okay, it's fine, one shot, but it's not going to do a lot of damage before the knight can, as I said before, hide. So you only have like maybe three, four seconds to do a little bit of damage. So sometimes it's worth, especially with the fusion I've got, the linear, I've got box breathe and field prep. This is the second best linear fusion rifle in the game. It is better than sleeper simulant. It is better than Corsair's Wrath. It is better than Tarantula technically. Although it depends on how you look at what's better, because Freddy Neal has Vorpal. But Box Breven has high damage per shot. So it's not a DPS weapon, but it, the ammo goes further, because you've got field prep. So you're getting way more ammo per brick. You've got the increased reload when you crouch. I, I've talked on and on about how field prep's probably one of the best or like underrated perks in the game. So that's one reason why it makes it second best. First is Reed's Regret, there's no doubt. With Vorpal Weapon Triple Tap, it is the best linear in the game because it's got Triple Tap, that gives you ammo out of thin air. So don't sleep on the Tranchlers, it's very good. But I had to farm this, I had to farm it and I farmed it via the um, decrypted data. So this is uh, so important. Now I'm pushing up, the boss is half HP. Don't stand on the outer island. If you stand on the outer island, when you make the boss immune, you, the outer island will turn into a no turn back zone and wipe you. You have four seconds to step off that zone. That's bad. So what you want to do is make the boss immune when you're on the middle plate. You can do you can do damage on, 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 on the middle plate. Just know that the boss will rotate from left to right and it can stomp you, things like that. If you stand in the middle plate, you're pretty much safe. Okay? And if you don't feel as though you surf, get invis, you'll lose all track into the boss. The boss won't know where you are as soon as you do, you know, a dodge. This is now with the Shattered Realm. So with the Shattered Realm, I'll just call it that for the purpose of the video. I know it's not called Shattered Realm, but we'll call it that. With this realm, you um, need to optimize for knights. You can sort of invis past them and things like that, but then I don't believe the knights and things despawn. At least I don't think so. That's not something I've tested. But I do know the boss will move up. So the boss, this is kind of like a chase mechanic type thing, where the boss will move from rock to rock. Kind of like prophecy, but in a different way that you need to kill the ads to make the boss 
proceed to the next part and the next part where his prophecy is timed which is one of the best dps mechanics i've ever seen in any game like ever just the way that prophecy fight works Ec uh, kill echo like it's amazing but for this you need to kill the sniper and the um knight solar knight to make the boss move the boss won't move on the first rock because he's on the second rock the first rock has an overload champion which we are going to take I'm not sure if they despawn or not. I didn't. That's one thing I didn't test. But I was happy enough to take the overload anyways. Right. So essentially, what we're looking to do here is take this soul knight. And as I've already explained about the the AI with these knights, is there's not a lot you can do. If they hide, they hide. Now you can try stunning the champion, and that sometimes lose the knight out. You can try pot shotting over there with your bow. For the most part, the knight's not gonna aggro you. So you need to push up unfortunately and it's really dangerous because the boss on the other side on the rock can hit you from from here so I, I go loop around the rock get a shield break with a hod in viz in that order and as quick as that because you can get you can get killed if the uh, sniper overload champion snipes you which he is a sniper he's not a stasis see a lot of the overlords in this nightfall most of them are, are stasis ones which aren't as dangerous the sniper ones are way more dangerous. What I learned on this run though is that once you get the overload in a good place, you can just continually overload that champion and kill him from here. That eliminates the boss from shooting you because the boss has range drop off, so he's not going to shoot you from here. Although I have seen him do that, but he wasn't doing that on this run. Maybe because the boss was de aggroed hiding behind that pillar. I wasn't I wasn't fussed. So I could I, I couldn't weave a hard because it's too far for a difficult shot for me. So I just continually overloaded him with a bow. Which as I say, it ended up working out just because I would say because I've got Archer's Temp on it. It was just quick enough just to sort of get the overload shots in. An explosive payload bow would have been, as I said, tremendously better than what I was using. But it still goes to show you can still use a Tyranny of Heaven and without explosive and get by with it. The overload is pretty weak now. That's taken. So now we can sort of push up. If any yards, if you can see any yards, you can pot shot them from here. Which I would recommend any any damage you can get in, then do it. Because the closer you get to that island, um, that's when you start to get attacked by the boss. As I said, the boss will not move until you take out both the sniper and the solar knight. Trying to get this solar sniper, miss my shots, it's okay though. And now it's the solar knight. So solar knight was hiding, but I do end up finding a good angle on the solar knight, which I suggest that you use. It's sort of all the way around. There's a pillar to my left. If you go loop all the way around there, you can always see the solar knight. Be careful though, because obviously the boss can see you, but you, you can put some pot shots in, do a wither hard shot, etc. to sort of you know, get the damage in you need. I believe we've all shot just about, it doesn't quite clear at orange bar night, but it comes close. <laughs> Always be having your eyes on that boss. What is the boss doing? Or at all times. Always be concentrating on that. As I said, the night isn't peaking, so as I said, I'll end up looping round. Here we go. And you can see a clear angle on the night, which is good. Try and get some river hard damage in. Can be more of a pa this is a patience game at this point. Night is literally one shot, we'll invis so the boss doesn't know where we are at first. Gives us a moment, even if it's just a second, just gives us that extra moment of damage on the night. Night is taken. That's good. Be picking up any ammo drops as well. My heavy's low. I wasn't happy with the amount of heavy I had, but I believe I ended up getting some. I would suggest going with as much heavy as you can for this. That's why I suggested on the first phase of damage, like in that first room, you don't need to DPS. You don't need to be doing loads of damage because the, the mechanics have changed, which is probably the better change, to be honest, um, with it not being a DPS window. I wouldn't have minded it, 
but it was just that you got a phase of silence every time you would uh, do DPS. You'd get your 10 seconds, you'd get shielded again, and then you'd get a, a phase for every time that happened. So, so you could be taking three phases, four phases in that room. So I, I see why they've done that. You can get an angle on the Solar Knight sometimes, which I'm doing so here. He's half HP. So we're d again we're doing the same thing. We're taking him. We're taking the ads as far back as possible so that we don't need to be keeping an eye on the boss because the boss isn't hitting us. The boss is de-aggroed. The boss will aggro the closer you get. There is an unstoppable champion on the next one as well, which I'm going to explain about that. Um, what you want to do about the unstoppable, because the unstoppable is awkward. He's on that little island, and it's so easy for him to just push you off the map. I'm not saying it's happened to me, but it, I wouldn't like the thought of it. So, on the run previous to this, I tested out the unstoppable to see if he would despawn. He doesn't despawn. He teleports on top of you. So we already know this. So what we're going to do is invis past him. And the way to do this is you need to jump across. Just be careful of the rocks. You've still got that rock mechanic going on. Right, so jump to the right instead. Then jump over here. And then as soon as you get on this island, wait and listen for audio cues. I heard an audio cue behind my back. The, the champion has teleported. He teleports up top. So you've got to be super, super careful about that. Um, and what I do is I like to take him from here, really. Um, you can get consistent damage on him. I don't know if he jumps here. I didn't go that far. But he definitely goes to there, at least. If you're going to be jumping over the heads, you've got to be confident about it. And you know what you're doing with it. This was really unfortunate, though. That can happen when they teleport right back up top. That's fine, we've got him finishable, but just be aware of it, because he could have teleported like, right behind me, then boot me. I don't know. He was stopped, though. So, that wasn't bad. Now with phase two. So this is what I consider as the main phase two of the fight. This is the final fight. Okay, the final part. This is the actual final arena. So this arena is built with floating rocks round the middle platform, and then you've got your outer island, the ring, if you like, and then there's like little pillars broken pillars all the way around it so how you meant to play this fight is map rotation pillar rotation i actually once i've learned this fight don't mind it as much as what i used to especially the fact that they nerfed uh said here uh the knockback distance and things but what i've done there is i went in these jumped on the island and then jumped back that spawns in your scions that you can take the sands from back here like phase one they've included an outer island for you to fight from which I don't know if it's, it probably is on purpose because they've done a lot of change with this uh, uh, corrupted. So that that's a good change in my eyes. But this can't be used once you get Solar Knights. When you get a shield break, this island is a no turn back zone. If you stand here, you will wipe and you will lose your progress and you'll go to orbit. So use it for Scions like for this first phase and then once that's done, this will be a no turn back zone. But only when you get a shield break on the boss which is a five orb it's five orbs so use the pillars go in viz be tactical you'll find that um the boss is less likely to do their boot mechanic this is where the boot mechanic comes in okay so it's a ring round you as soon as you see that ring you want to run to left right whatever you want don't run on the outside of the map though try and run inwards okay because the boss is going to try to boop you right as long as you there's, there's a couple of tactics you can do. If you're in mid-air, you can sort of swing with the orb to negate the, the distance. Or you can slide. Run and slide is probably the best. Or you can do a invis. The dodge will negate the distance. But at all costs, do not let that boss boop you off. Okay. Also, I have found if you run circles around this map, okay, the boss can't hit you with that attack. So in actual fact, you're safer running around the map like this and then throw an orb run around the map throw an orb run around the map that is the safest way to do it rather than trying to optimize the you know negate and boop damage just run away that is the best strap for this just run away 
you sometimes will get hit. You saw I did, but that's where you come in with your slides and your stuff like that. Get the boss one shot, so the shield needs to be one shot. Then you need to prep, because you're going to get solar knights. As soon as the shield is broken, do not do DPS. Forget about DPS. You could do maybe three shots of linear and then, you know, go about your way, but honestly, if you're this far into it, I wouldn't even recommend doing that. I just come over here because I was recording my footage. I was recording so far of the run, because you can only record 60 minutes of a run. I wasn't sure if this was going to take me one hour, five minutes, one hour, ten minutes. So that's all I was doing there. But you can see you can still stand on that island until the shield is broke, you can still stand on it. So you could wait out a super, right? If you haven't got super, you could wait that out just on that island if you wanted. We get the final shield break and then you'll hear add spawn. The night spawn is different, uh, it's different every time. I think what it is, the captains, two solar captains, they spawn on the opposite side to where you are. Because on my first run, they spawned where the relic was, and on the second run, this one, they spawned at the bottom of the map. So I was kind of, I was kind of mad about that because I thought the spawn would just be the same. So I was trying to spawn kill a captain, didn't happen. See there, the boss, uh, the captain got knocked off the map. That's perfect. I'll take that any day. That just makes my job a lot easier because this is this is difficult. This is more difficult. You can see the wither horde bow shot combo almost kills a, uh, an enemy but that's what you want to do with it break shield with a hard run that is that is the in that order you can you don't have time to be doing anything else you know picking up ammo stuff like that like once you've done that just keep running around the map the boss's ai will change not yet but on the next phase so you can see he's just more floating around but when you get on to the next phase of this fight, when you do, when you get the next shield break, the boss chases you. So we're doing our DPS. We do some good damage there. That's really good. I'm happy with that. Um, gets him weak for the final phase. Now he gets a wave of sounds. So the same applies. This isn't that dangerous because you've got Weaver Hard available to you. This is another reason why I've got Weaver Hard. Just the, the fact you can spawn, kill them. Um, and then just run around the map. Invis when when needing. But you don't need that much invis. You can see I'm running around the map. Don't be spamming invis because you need to be more tactical. You're on top tree. You've got less invis, but your invis is better. The boss will get confused at times, not knowing where you are. But the boss will chase you. So the rule is don't go don't back up don't back up on yourself. So if you're going round clockwise, don't then go anti-clockwise or something. Just keep going clockwise. Or if you're always going anti-clockwise clockwise always go that way go the same way you're always going because what the, the boss can teleport on you and then stomp you off map that's a different mechanic to boop that's a full-on stomp and you may not survive that so the relic is in middle now this isn't hard to pick up i thought it was going to be difficult but it isn't because the boss doesn't go in middle so much so all you really want to be doing is um go and um rotate around the map until the boss is maybe on the outskirts of the map then you go in middle that is a perfect opportunity to get an orb then run around the map again and then wait for another opportunity to get a shield break to get you know to throw the orb don't give the boss an opportunity to do the boot mechanic generally the boss won't on this phase especially if you're just running away i don't think you're doing it once i think he oh he just did it before sorry so he can do it but it's less likely to Get another orb. I wasn't sure how many orbs I threw. So if you ever like, because obviously you've got a lot to do. You know, you've got a map rotate. You might forget I've threw four orbs. I've threw three. Don't break that shield until you know where you are. Until you know where you are with damage. Because um, when you you need to get ready for DPS, I end up screwing my last phase of DPS. This should have been way easier than what it was. Essentially, when you get your fifth orb, you throw it. Then you want to do as many linear shots as possible, and you need to get your crits. And that will instantly wipe the boss, because what's going to happen is you have two more solar knights. They spawn like five seconds after the shield break's done. So you've got like five seconds to sort of melt the boss down, which is easy enough if you eat crits. I just panicked, and I lost my crits. 
But if that happens to you as well, then I'll show you what you can do. Protective Blade saved us. He's doing a huge amount of damage to us there for some reason. I don't know if the boss, boss's attack scales the longer the strike goes on. There seems to be something, because it's inconsistent damage. 100%. So we'll do a last throw. We're hitting our crits actually. Miss, missing some shots there. Do a tether. We miss our wither hard. Boss is weak. And then we get knights. So we were too slow on it. Um, and the, the, the knight spawning. Don't overcommit to damage. I'm overcommitting here. And I get lucky. So d don't bother. Because what you can do. I wasn't realising that there was another spawn of uh, solar knights here. What you can do is just ignore the, the knights. Just map, map rotate. I mean, if you can take a knight safely, do it. That's sh sure. But the knights can't really get you if you just map rotate like so. Uh, and what you want to do is you need to wait for an instance where you can wither hard the boss. Right now it's perfect. He teleports on me. I use a wither hard. I was hoping the wither hard would finish the boss off. He nearly does. I do actually get unlucky with the knights. I did say the knights are pretty safe to leave up, but they're kind of not as well. Because the knight did a lot of damage to me, and I get super, I get super uh, close with that. So what happened there was um, Weaverhood finished the boss, and arc damage recent saved us, and that was the uh, solo grandmaster completion for uh, corrupted. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.